As we move through our daily lives, we experience a variety of emotions which we often call feelings. Emotions are subjective states of being that, physiologically speaking, involve physiological arousal, psychological appraisal and cognitive processes, subjective experiences and expressive behavior. Emotions are often the driving force behind motivation, whether positive or negative, and are expressed and communicated through a wide range of behaviors, such as tone of voice and body language. Today, we're delving into the art of becoming a master of your emotions with six brutal rules. Let's dive in. One, don't love anyone too much. Love is a wonderful inclination. It ties us, interfaces us, and frequently gives our lives meaning. Notwithstanding, over-the-top love or connection can be a blade that cuts both ways. It can cloud our judgment, make us helpless, and lead us down ways of sorrow when that affection isn't responded or is lost. The Stoics, rationalists who supported close-to-home strength, frequently talked about the risks of connection. Marcus Aurelius, a Roman head and unemotional thinker, once commented you have control over your brain, not external occasions. Understand this, and you will track down strength the strength he talks about, is the capacity to adore without turning out to be excessively joined. It's the solidarity to see the value and the excellence of a relationship without allowing it to characterize your whole presence. In our personal lives, this lesson is clear. Think back to a time when you loved someone too much, to the point where their actions or decisions controlled your happiness. The pain of betrayal, the agony of heartbreak, or even the simple disappointment of unmet expectations can be overwhelming. But what if you could love with the same intensity without the vulnerability? The key lies in understanding that love is fleeting, like all emotions. It comes and goes, and while it's present, it should be cherished. However, it shouldn't become the anchor that holds you down instead. Let it be the wind that pushes your sails, guiding you but not defining your direction. By mastering the art of detached love, you protect your heart and empower your soul. You become capable of forming deep connections without the fear of losing yourself in them. This is the first step towards mastering your emotions, where you control them and they don't control you to cut off toxic people from your life. Individuals we encircle ourselves with assume an essential part in molding our feelings, contemplations and generally prosperity. Similarly, as a solitary, spoiled, organic product can ruin the whole bin, a poisonous individual can create a shaded area over our lives, depleting our energy and blurring our judgment. The Stoics had confidence in the force of self-safeguarding and dignity. They comprehended that while we have zero control over the activities of others, we can pick our affiliations. Diogenes, a servant known for his unemotional and plain perspectives, once said, we have two ears and one tongue, so we would listen more and talk less. This is an update that we ought to be perceptive of the organization we keep and pay attention to our instinct and reflect on your own life. Are there individuals who constantly bring negativity, sow doubts, or undermine your ambitions? These are the toxic influences that one must learn to distance from. It's not about harboring animosity, but recognizing that for one's own emotional well-being, Certain ties need to be severed or distanced. Cutting off toxic people is not an act of cruelty, it's an act of self-love. It's a declaration that you value your peace of mind and emotional health above all else. By doing so, you create a protective barrier, ensuring that negativity, doubt, and pessimism find no place in your life. In the pursuit of mastering emotions, this step is crucial. It's about cleansing your emotional environment, ensuring that you're surrounded by positivity support and genuine care. Remember, the journey to mastering one's emotions starts by ensuring that external influences align with your inner goals. They don't care for everyone, but sympathy, the capacity to comprehend and discuss the thoughts of another, is in many cases praised as quite possibly of the most temperate human characteristic. It permits us to interface, solace and assemble bonds. In any case, Unreasonable compassion can be depleting both intellectually and inwardly. It can toss us into the disturbance of others' concerns and feelings, frequently at the expense of our own prosperity. Opictus, another famous apathetic scholar, when said, it's not what befalls you, yet the way in which you respond to it that is important this shrewdness holds particularly obvious with compassion. 
While it's normal to feel for other people, it's critical to decide when to connect with and when to remove oneself. It envision being a wipe that retains each drop of water it comes into contact with. Over the long run, without wringing out the abundance, the wipe becomes oversaturated and loses its viability. Likewise, when we care too profoundly for everybody and everything, we risk turning out to be genuinely soaked. Our judgment becomes obfuscated, our energy gets drained, and we lose center around our own requirements and desires. This doesn't mean choosing to disregard the affliction or delights of others. All things considered, it's about particular sympathy. It's tied in with picking when to contribute genuinely and when to keep a degree of separation. Thusly, you safeguard yourself from pointless inner strife and guarantee that when you really do decide to mind, it's authentic, centered, and significant in the excursion to dominating feelings. This specific compassion turns into an incredible asset, permitting you to explore the world with clearness and guaranteeing that your close to home energy is spent shrewdly. Four, don't express your feelings. In a world that continually urges us to express our genuine thoughts and wear our hearts on our sleeves, there's an irrational power peacefully and limitation. While open correspondence is fundamental in numerous parts of life, there's a significant strength in picking when and where to communicate our deepest sentiments and perspectives. The Stoics frequently underscored the significance of internal quietness and the risks of outside approval. Marcus Aurelius once noticed, the satisfaction of your life relies on the nature of your viewpoints by continually looking for approval or responses from others. We place our close-to-home prosperity in their grasp. Uncontemplate the times you've shared an individual accomplishment or a profoundly held conviction to get outside approval, just to get analysis or joke. Such encounters can be crippling and can shake our certainty. However, imagine a scenario where you held that power inside not allowing outside responses to control your close-to-home state. Deciding not to communicate each inclination or view isn't about concealment, it's about strengthening. It's tied in with understanding that only one out of every odd idea needs a crowd of people, and that our internal world doesn't necessarily need outside approval. By rehearsing this limitation, you develop a healthy identity assuredness. Your feelings, convictions, and perspectives become unfaltering in light of the fact that they're no longer helpless before others' viewpoints. In the mission to dominate your feelings, this standard fills in as a defensive safeguard. It guarantees that you're close to home center remaining areas of strength for parts by the short-lived feelings and responses of your general surroundings. I've stopped being always available. Before you go, remember to subscribe for a regular dose of unfiltered motivation. Now, unleash your inner beast and conquer the day. Difficulty limits, both physical and close to home, are fundamental for keeping an identity and guaranteeing our prosperity. During a time of steady network, where we're supposed to be accessible consistently, defining limits can appear to be a hard errand. Nonetheless, it's this very act that can lead us to profound opportunity and strength. The Stoics put stock in the worth of time and the significance of contemplation. Seneca once said, constantly you have as a place with you. Yet, how frequently do we squander it by being unendingly accessible to everybody, answering each message in a split second, or taking care of each and every interest right away? But by not defining limits, we make an impression on the world that our time, energy, and profound prosperity are available to all and have no worth. This consistent accessibility can prompt burnout, disdain, bitterness, sorrow, and a sensation of being overpowered. It resembles leaving the entryways and windows of your home completely open, permitting anybody and anything to come in and upset your tranquility. Defining limits is a demonstration of dignity. It's a statement that you esteem your time, your close-to-home energy, and your genuine serenity. It implies figuring out how to express no without responsibility, setting aside margin for yourself without defense, and understanding that being less accessible doesn't mean you care any less it essentially implies you care about yourself as well. In the excursion towards dominating your feelings, defining limits is a crucial stage. It guarantees that your profound repository isn't continually being depleted. 
It permits you to keep a feeling of harmony and strength, paying little mind to outer requests. The six, put yourself first. Once we close to the finish of our excursion towards profound strength, rule six underlines the significance of putting yourself first and embracing straightforwardness. To genuinely dominate your feelings and be unshaken and roused, you should focus on your own prosperity. There's really no need to focus on disregarding others, yet about perceiving that you can't help anybody assuming you disregard yourself. Consider the carrier security guidelines that advise you to put on your own breathing device prior to helping others. Likewise, throughout everyday life, you should guarantee your close-to-home dependability and accomplishment prior to stretching out that help to other people. Being clear is one more critical part of close-to-home strength. It implies offering in your points, necessities, and limits plainly and decisively. This doesn't mean being discourteous, yet it implies being self-assured and fair. Keeping away from circuitous correspondence and human satisfying is essential. At the point when you're direct, you forestall errors, diminish pressure, and cultivate certified associations with the people who regard your genuineness. Integrating Rule 6 into your life implies pursuing choices that line up with your objectives and values. It implies saying no when essential and being proudly yourself. Keep in mind it's not egotistical to focus on yourself and be direct. It's a stage towards individual strengthening and achievement. With Rule 6, we conclude our journey towards emotional strength and mastering your emotions. You're now armed with a warrior's mindset. Embrace the fire within you and let nothing stand in your way. Life is a battlefield, and you're the conqueror.